Welcome to the part one of a three-part series of Try Hack Me's Rick and Morty problem. This will be a daily upload series and will be uploaded in the evening according to Indian Standard Time. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and share the word about our channel to your family and friends. I hope you can learn something from the video. Enjoy. Welcome back students to another video by Cyber Vidya Peet Foundation. In this video, we'll be going through one of the easy boxes on the Try Hack Me learning platform. To find the box, head over to tryhackme.com slash hacktivities. And in there, in the search tab, you want to look for CTFs. And then you want to pick the second CTF in the first row, which is the Pickle Rick. This is a Rick and Marty themed CTF designed to gamify the process of hacking for anybody trying it out for the first time. We highly recommend this box to new beginners. You wanna start by clicking on join room. This will allow us you to join the room, add it to your list of favorite rooms and let you access the assets present in this room. Now, the next thing is what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the start machine right here. This is going to quickly go ahead and start my machine and give me an IP address to attack. Then I'm going to go back to my terminal and I'm going to go inside easy try hack me easy Rick there we go so in here we can see that there's only one file called nmap, which is the network mapper file, which is where we'll be storing the nmap logs. And other than that, the file is pretty empty, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and download my configuration file. So I'm just going to go to download, download the configuration file, and go back. Then I'm going to copy the OpenVPN configuration file from my downloads to here. So there we go. This is how we download. So now that the file is there, I can do sudo openvpn and the name of the file with the password. Once we do that, a connection is initiated between my system and the you know and the closed off system of TryHackMe and a tunnel network called tunnel zero is open between the two. Now I'll open a new terminal and start with an nmap scan. I wanna do dash sc for default script, dash sv for enumerate all versions, dash oa for output all formats, and I also wanna store the data in a file called initial. Furthermore, I also want high verbosity, so I'm going to use the dash vvv flag. Now, let's take the IP address um, 10 10 1 9 1 7 3 and just paste that in and try to run our scan and see if we are able to find any weak services or ports running on the system. There will be some connection delays, definitely. And that is happening because we are doing a scan inside a VPN network with a server that's probably not stored in, you know, in the country that I'm making this video in. So that could be one issue. There are other issues sometimes like this system and the bandwidth and the resource limitations. There can be multiple reasons for this. So let's give it a few seconds. We can see that the NAC or the NMAP scripting engine was initialized and the scan was fired and completed without too much worry. So, we can see that Ubuntu's version of the OpenSSH 7.2p2 is running here, and the Apache HTTP PD 2.4.18 is running here, which is fantastic. We also see that the port 80 and port 22, both TCP, are also running. So let's open up Firefox and let's try to have a look. So we want HTTP colon HTTP colon slash slash 10 10 191 dot 73 on port 80 we can see the following 
message right here which says help Mordi. So Mordi is being attacked. Okay. Listen, Mordi, I need your help. I've turned myself into a pickle again, and this time I can't change back. I need you to work. Mordi, log on to my computer and find the three secret ingredients to finish my pickle reverse potion. The only problem is I had no idea what the password was. Help, Mordi, help. So Mordi has to now hack in. Now, I understand that, you know, in the series, Mordi is not that bright. But in here, Mordi knows you know, in the hacking world, Mod is genius. Mod knows that, you know, you always check for the rewards file first on any website. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. When I do that, I see a string. So I will copy that string. I'll go to sublime text and I'll paste that string. And I'll keep that string in my notes. Okay. Then I will remove the string. So let me just remove the string. Copy it. Go back to my terminal right here and run the command such as derby. So uh, to run the derby command, you need to install the derby command. So let's give it a few minutes. There we go. This is going to install the derby package. Also known as the derbuster package. We'll use it to brute force the paths inside of the website or the web server. Another nice trick that I'm going to show you guys is finding out what exactly is the extension for the website. So Rick is super cool is a text you see here at the top, right? You also see that index.html works. Does index.aspx work? No, it doesn't. Does index.php work? No, it doesn't. But HTML works. So for now, we don't have a leak of the language. If we right click anywhere and try to view the source code for the page, we see an interesting you know, comment here, note to self, remember username, Rick one rules, there we go. So now we have a username. So if I go back here and just make sure to mention that this is our username, this is still something, could be you know the password, we don't know. So we still need to uh, mess around to find out if that truly is the password. I'm also going to try something else. I'm going to just try index, just index and see if it takes me anywhere. Okay, it doesn't. What about login.html? Does it take me to login.html? No. What about login.php? Is there a login.php? And there we go, we hit it. So, you know, many times attacking a web server is about knowing what endpoints to hit. So first thing I recommend is always to look for what language was used in the backend to make the website. If you know that, then your work gets super, super easier. Okay. So now we know the username and possibly the password. So I can just copy the username, right? I can just paste the username and then I can paste whatever this is and try to log in and let's see if we get access or not. And we did, we did get access. Perfect, we are in, just like that. You know, we went to portal.php and notice it's PHP, right? Because we went to login.php. That means that PHP is definitely present on this web server and PHP commands can be executed. I also see a command panel where I should be able to execute some commands. So let's see if I can ping to google.com. Is that a possibility? Let's see, let's try to execute. And let's see if this command returns any output whatsoever or not. Though I'm not you know, expecting this to work because this virtual machine is probably closed off from the internet. Yeah, there we go. We have a 100% packet loss. I want to now ping, say, myself. This should be super easy to do and this command should output all correct. Yeah. So we are able to access the ping executable, which is perfect, right? So now I should be able to just do a simple ls command. There we go. And we now have a bunch of files here. So let's look at each file turn by turn. I'm going to copy and paste this here and go to the assets folder, which is a folder we saw here, right here, right? If you see, this is a directory because it has a D in the beginning of its code. If you go inside here, 
we don't see anything too fancy right we see a fail dot gif which is clearly a funny funny um, meme we see pickle red dot gif right again a meme a portal image that was being loaded in the first page and then this beautiful image of people literally running after both of them rick and morty right so clearly that's fun but if you go to the main page then nothing super serious happens so assets is where it was all loaded from there's also this super secret pickle ingredient.txt thing and this is probably one of the three ingredients we are looking for so we see this ingredient right here so what i would recommend is to go to the okay so that looks like the first ingredient not the second or the third ingredient so that was a simple brute force i did right there okay perfect now i have the first answer done so i've completed this machine a little bit if you look here there's a clue.txt as well so let's let's try to let's try to read clue.txt to see what is going on look around the file system for other ingredients okay it tells me that it also tells me deny.php is something index.html login.php portal and then there is robot so i have to look around so what i'm going to do is i am going to cd dot dot and then ls dash lleh okay this is the command i'm going to run okay so i am able to go back which is perfect now i can just chain that so i will again do it like so cd dot dot and this should take me directly perfect perfect so you can see i can actually browse through the entire uh, you know file system okay i could basically do um you know a command execution extract whatever files i want out of you now this is honestly not that impressive and there are a few reasons for this the first reason i do not like this is because um you know this is a very finicky way of doing it i mean you could always just have a bunch of uh, things going on here and there okay but it still doesn't change the fact that uh, this is not a really intuitive way of interacting with the file system so the question is what do we do and there is a very simple answer here okay and uh, what i'm going to do is i am going to so put another ampersand here okay so ampersand and now what i'm going to do is i want to go inside the Okay, so we have the crash, the cache, the backups. Okay. Um, this, I don't think so that this is the root directory. So let me do a cd dot dot again and let me print that out again. And yeah, this looks much more like the root directory structure. Okay, with the root folder. Perfect. So we are now in the root directory. So this command right here that i used this is taking us there so i'm going to do and and again and now let's see